Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. My name is Hirsch Mehta. I'm the Recruiting Specialist at the College of Engineering. This presentation, we're gonna do a brief overview of Northeastern University, specifically its College of Engineering. Then my colleagues at the Department of Bioengineering will do their brief presentation about their programs. And then we're gonna wrap it up again with some admissions on like wrapping up your application or your next steps. And then of course, we'll open it to Q&A. You guys have the feature of the um, question and answer at the bottom of your screen. So please feel free to type your questions in. This presentation is specifically geared to more of the department, not to find out of the status of your application. So I advise you not to continue to ask questions about your applications. If you do have questions about your application, I highly encourage you to um, email our College of the um, CEO grad admissions inbox not to use this platform for that piece. So without further ado, thanks for joining us once again. And so just something to go over is our code of conduct. So the university seeks to provide a supportive environment, right? So we want this platform and any platform at Northeastern to be safe and cohesive and conclusive to everyone. So we respect that we respect you and we want you to respect us and everyone that is here joining us today and to keep this a safe environment. We do have the right to kick you out, or as we say, to dismiss you from this webinar if there's any foul language used or any agitation or things against any professor or faculty or staff member. So what is Northeastern, right? So of course, everyone knows where Northeastern is, but there's so much more to more Northeastern as a whole. So the College of Engineering is one of the nine colleges at the School of Northeastern. We're ranked number one in co-op and internships. We have over 40,000 students across all regions of the world and the globe. We have over $230 million of external research. And of course, that's not alone are we in Boston, but we also have a global university system that I will show you briefly in the next slide. Within that, within Northeastern, we are a global experiential tier one research university. So we're really keen on making sure the time and the platform that you have at Northeastern is substantial and you're getting the most out of any experience that you have within Northeastern. So when we're talking about our global network and our global campuses, the next slide that's gonna briefly load is our global campus network. So we are just not alone in Boston. We are all over the East Coast and West Coast, and as well as we're also international. Our two newest additions to Northeastern is our Miami campus and our Oakland campus. Many of the programs that we have are available at both more than just one campus solo, right? So Boston is a flagship campus and is a hub for high tech, biotech, and academia, as well as the home of the most prestigious college. If you've never visited our Boston campus, we highly encourage you to do so, as well as join our virtual campus tours. Within that, several of our graduate and graduate programs within Northeastern are available to many students across the board. And then something, of course, that we'll talk more about is our co-ops, and co-ops are also available to students, not just in the campus that you're attending, but you're allowed to go to other places for co-ops. But the key function of Northeastern is education, research, and experiential learning. So this is a little um, snip of College of Engineering. Something that has recently changed this morning is that now we are top 32 engineering graduate school. Last year we were 33. So as you see, we were very focused and pristine on making sure that we are the best school out there for students, as well as for anyone that is interested in Northeastern. So this is what our student body looks like. We have over 10,000 student body from the fall intake. We also have over 6,000 students for our graduate programs. So we're up a lot in enrollment, as well as we've tried our faculty members, as well as the departments tried really hard in making sure that there's available resources for all students. The College of Engineering, we offer over 100 educational programs. So there's a lot of options for students from BS, MS, and PhD minors and graduate certificates. There are over 475 plus pathways to achieve an accelerated master's degree as well. So there's a lot of opportunities for students across all boards and all nations of Northeastern. So when we're talking about, specifically this webinar is about bioengineering, but within College of Engineering, we have six other disciplines within it. So it's bioengineering, chemical, 
MIE, which is our mechanical industrial engineering, civil environmental, electrical and computer engineering, and our last one is the multidisciplinary graduate education. So within all of this, a lot of our departments do work with other departments. At, like I said earlier, Northeastern, we're all about inclusive. So you will meet colleagues of other disciplines for you to collaborate with, as well as for you to connect with as well. To continue what we were talking about and making sure you get the best experience at Northeastern, these are some of our um, accomplished faculty um, information that we have shared. We have over 215 um, faculty members a lot of them are young and, and like award members as well. So there's a lot of um, growth that happens within Northeastern as well. There's a lot of webinars, there's in-person um, like guest speakers. So there's a lot of opportunities for students to continue their network and the collaboration. And of course, with that, it leads to like academic programs, right? So these are just a lot that we offer. Like I said, we have over 475 plus one pathways and if you're a student that wants to do all of them, good luck to you. But these are our, we have nine PhD programs, 32 MS degree programs, BS programs, and across the board, there's a little global network. So we showcase like how some of our programs are just not alone in Boston. We have other campuses that you could take your program in if you choose to, especially if you're someone that's like hesitant about which campus you're uncertain about, you can definitely have a conversation with our admissions office and we could definitely talk to you about that piece. And then of course, with all of our expansion and collaboration, we have outstanding facilities. So you see on the left of the screen is our interdisciplinary science and engineering complex. And then on the right of the screen, there's gonna be a new 350 square foot academic center as well. It's called the XPE. And so that's gonna be a lot of opportunities for students to do research in, for them to hang out, socialize, network hour happens there. A lot of our guest speakers come there. So our ISAC building is our one of our coolest features. So definitely highly encourage students to check it out. You can even Google the building. It's super innovative. It's super like environmental friendly. We use like recycled rainwater to like use it in the bathrooms and all that cool stuff. So highly encourage you to Google that for us. And then with the expansion, of course, research is really big, right? So we are R1 research school. So in the past, we received 92 $0.5 million in external research awards and up to and that's up 80% from last year. We have over 18 multidisciplinary research centers. So I know a lot of common questions students ask are, what are my research opportunities? What do you do for students and research? So my next slide will be a little bit more detailed about the centers and institutions within Northeastern for research opportunities, but there is a lot of research within the Boston campus as well as in our global campuses as well. And like I've said earlier, we are in the hub of um, Boston. So there's a lot of research within just the neighboring schools of us. So this is just a glimpse of our 18 research centers and institutions. So definitely there's a lot that happens. Um, you could take a screenshot of this. This is also public on our website. So those are some things you definitely want to look into at Northeastern or even to 100% to be part of. So this is what CEO mission is. It's an academic institution of, of our main product is people, right? Our success is based on quantity, not on, sorry, success is based on quantity and quality of the people we produce. So this is a little message, message from our dean is that good engineer solve problems, great engineers solve important problems, but transformative engineers discover and solve important problems, right? So at Northeastern, we, pr we produce transformative engineers, students and faculty with global impact, right? So each of us today and each of us and all of you that are joining this webinar are gonna be part of that. And then that's what we are very proud of at Northeastern. So I'm gonna pass it along to my colleagues at the bioengineering department to showcase what they do and how it relates to our mission statement. All right, um, so I'll take over. Um, my, um, this is my pleasure to welcome you. Um, this is uh, Chin Chin Feng. Um, I'm the associate uh, chair for the bioengineering department. And it's my great pleasure to welcome you to join our bioengineering section of the uh, Wonder Week um, webinar series. Um, Harsh, if you can move to the next slide. 
Oh. Okay, let's, uh, at the beginning, I just like to uh, play a short video clip that introduces our department. Um, if you can click on the YouTube video. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and play. Oops, there's no audio I don't hear. Um, I don't I don't hear audio. Um Arsh, do you have the oh, audio on playback? Audio should be on, but let me pause sharing and <clears throat> hold on, let me new share. Okay. Um Do you hear it now? Mm, a, a little blip of sound. I know. Yeah, very sporadically. Uh, what I mean, can I um, use my computer instead? Sure. Or... You should okay. be able to share as well. Okay, give me one second. Um... I've also got it lined up. Um, if you want to switch over screen sharing. Okay, so um, I mean, what? Why don't we, uh, Caroline? Do you want to uh, go sure. ahead? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I'll uh, give it a go. So, Caroline, you should be able to share. I'm going to stop sharing. <clears throat> okay, great. Can you see the video? Yes. Mm -hmm. And let's try the sound. Many of our students can create a vaccine, help someone with a disability produce a ventilator. Have a real impact on people with terminal cancer illnesses. The remarkable thing about bioengineering is it brings together all of the disciplines of engineering. We offer four different concentrations in which you can really focus on the particular part of bioengineering that you're interested in. Cell and tissue engineering, biomechanics, biomedical devices, and computational or systems biology. This is where bioengineering is moving forward. This is where bioengineering is making greater and greater differences in our world. There are a ton of opportunities at Northeastern to help prepare you for whatever career you want to do. There's a huge ecosystem of biotechnology and bioengineering within Boston. The future of medicine is being invented within five miles of Northeastern University. Many of our students get the opportunity to go into unique research and development environments. The co-op program is amazing. It was one of the reasons why I came here. I did my co-op at Wushi Aptec, and we tried to optimize affinity selection and also try to do QC reports for consumers and then do research for them. Definitely helped to create the picture of how the industry works. We give students the time and the freedom to really understand what's going on in the world of bioengineering. Most of our classes are very, very interactive. They're very, very project-based, and they're very, very research-based. One of the exciting things about bioengineering is the degree of interdisciplinary interactions. Virtually every laboratory in the department interfaces, collaborates with other laboratories, whether they're mechanical engineering, physics, biology, or chemical engineering. The experiential nature of working in a research lab is that you come in in the morning and you're driving your own day. My job as a PI is to make it so that they can come in and generate an idea and just be able to go for it. So they're constantly being able to try new things, test their hypotheses, talk to people around them. My research focuses on a medicinal plant that makes a chemotherapy drug. So my research is aiming at understanding the molecular mechanisms of how the plant makes this chemo drug in order to genetically engineer a plant that makes more. Our faculty are driven to answer difficult questions. Our students learn skill sets that will allow them to contribute to those answers. And they go out and they work in industry, they work in academia, they work in research labs, and they are making an impact every single day. All right, um, maybe you can help me uh, continue. <laughs> Um, advancing the slides, Caroline? Yep, just uh, taking a second to load. Okay. Let me try that again.
So I can, yeah, yep, I can start, with me. My, start um, use my own. Yeah, that might be better than uh, internet. Okay. I'm having a great time this morning. <laughs> Let me do that. Um, so I can share screen. Okay, so um, it is um, my pleasure to uh, give you this uh, introduction to our department uh, graduate program. And I'll um, spend the next 20, around 20 minutes to talk about our focus on our PhD program. And uh, Dr. Xiaoming Shi will talk about a, uh, our master program. So uh, just to start, I wanted to um, introduce you to our um, administrative team that lead the department, uh, our um our department chair, Professor Lee Mikulski, um, essentially started the department um, eight years ago, and we are one of the youngest departments, yet uh, we have uh, grew tremendously over the past eight years. And now we have a department uh, with faculty members, uh, over 30 faculty members. Um, so um, I'm the current, uh, currently the uh, associate chair for research and graduate affairs. And Professor Xiaoming Shi, who will talk about our master program, is the director for our master um, program. Um, uh, we also have a wonderful um, support team for our graduate students. Um, uh, Aster Cohen is our uh, business manager who manages uh, the day-to-day -day, day -day business of the department, including uh, the financial support for all the students. Uh, there are questions related to um, research assistantship, uh, TA assignments, and uh, other, uh, you know, all uh, student activities, funding for uh, travel awards, uh, student um, uh, other um, questions related to to the department um, uh, financial supports. Uh, Esther is the um, person to um, answer those questions. Caroline Prittimore is our academic um, uh, manager and, and she is uh, our kind of um, bridge between graduate students with uh, faculty members. And she uh, talk, work with every student, understand their challenges, uh, help their uh, course selection um, and answer any of the questions related to their milestones and, and check their well-being. So um, Caroline worked closely with our graduate committee and, and make sure our students are on track. Um, as you know, uh, co-op program is a trademark for Northeastern and we rank number one in uh, internship and co-op uh, in the US. Um, there is a very strong and very uh, extensive team uh, at Northeastern to help students to locate co-op opportunities and help them uh, train the students to, uh, to take some professional trainings before they go on to the co-op and do a, 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 a and follow up uh, after they um, return from the co-op. And we have uh, coordinators specifically for our uh, program. Um, Max Sander and uh, Karen Kelly and also Allison. These are our uh, bioengineering um, uh, co coordinators and who know pretty much every em employers in the Boston and greater Boston area. And also we have sent students to uh, other international countries and, um, and brought uh, globally. Um, for those of you who have never traveled to Boston, um, Boston is a place with uh, a lot of, um, um, it's, it's, it's a place with magic. You know, I have to say that I've, I've been living here for, um, you know, close to um, close to 20 years. And I, I really love this place. And we have, um, Boston have uh, many of the um, um, exciting uh, activities. Uh, there, there is a um, um, lot of um, pharmaceutical companies, uh, research facilities, hospitals um, and also there, uh, Boston have um, one of the um, tw world's 20th largest um, um, museum, uh, Museum of Fine Art, which is just at the backyard of Northeastern. And with a student, um, uh, your student card, you can get into the Museum of Fine Art um, uh, every day. 
Another uh, major um, attraction for Boston is uh, it has been known as the capital of pharmaceutical companies and biotech. Um, as you um, maybe the, some of the names are not familiar, but at least uh, through the uh, COVID pandemic, you might have heard about Moderna, Pfizer. These are the main um, 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 the, uh, the the vaccine um, developers and distributors throughout the uh, the country and throughout the globe. So they're basically the uh, most of the uh, the the big pharmaceutical companies have either a office or their headquarters in Boston. And there's um, many of these uh, job uh, opportunities available um, and, and many of the exciting development of, um, of the, the next generation in pharmaceutical um, uh, pharma pharmacy are, are being developed in Boston. And, and there's a, a lot of uh, active collaboration between Northeastern and these companies. And there has been um, several of uh, our bioengineering faculty members are uh, sponsored or supported by uh, these companies developing the, uh, the, the next generation um, um, vaccine or other um, medicine technology. Um, Northeastern is uh, conveniently located at the center of uh, Boston, and we are uh, basically um, the uh, it's just in the very close neighborhood, we have uh, the best uh, university uh, uh, and, and research hospital. We have the, um, the largest um, research hospital in the US, the Mass General Hospital. And we have the best uh, children's hospital, uh, Boston Children's Hospital in the neighborhood. And there are a lot of uh, activities, uh, research, um, collaborations between those com uh, those um, uh, hospitals with the faculty members at Northeastern. And as I mentioned, there are also all the uh, pharmaceutical companies in the neighborhood. And there are, there are these um, activities uh, also uh, in terms of collaboration, in terms of uh, their participation to our uh, educational program. We have a uh, industrial uh, advisory board uh, made of uh, executives from many of these um, pharmaceutical companies, and they came uh, to our department to give presentations and also listen to our faculty's uh, presentation about latest research and students' research. As uh, one of the youngest department in the College of Engineering, we are uh, very lucky to be located in this uh, uh, this beautiful um, ISAC building that Harsh mentioned earlier is called uh, in Interdisciplinary Science and Technology Complex, uh, Science and Engineering Complex, ISAC. Um, it's uh, it's uh, one of the um, most uh, advanced and the latest and be most beautiful uh, facility on, uh, on Northeastern's campus. Uh, our department is conveniently conveniently located on the second and third floor of this, um, and all the students have a seating area that have um, an open view through the whole building. And our uh, our labs are also uh, located mostly on the second and third floor. So I'm going to just quick quickly go through the uh, course our uh, degree requirements for completing a PhD degree at our department. Uh, we have uh, two tracks, one track, one set of requirements are for students uh, come in to our PhD program with a bachelor's degree. Um, for those students, uh, there's a requirement of 32 semester hour credits uh, of courses. Um, that's roughly translated in a, a typical uh, full semester course is roughly four semester hours. So this is roughly translated uh, to eight full courses um, to complete the degree uh, with the course requirements of the degree. For students with a, a relevant master degree, and we call that advanced entry. And if you have already received a master degree in uh, relevant areas uh, to bioengineering, then your course requirement will be cut down by half. So roughly four courses, 16 semester hours. In addition for uh, these uh, taking these courses, you are, um, you are required to also have other, other requirements. For example, among these courses, you need to um, take, uh, there are three uh, 
uh, required courses. You have to take these as part of your uh, credit hour requirements. And that's including a principal bioengineering introduced to basic skill set for doing uh, high quality research, such as literature reading, uh, writing proposals, and writing critiques. Medical physiology teach you about the, you know, the body uh, anatomy, the physiology of the body, uh, and also mathematical methods build a strong uh, foundation for analytical skills and, uh, and, and rigorous uh, problem solving with mathematics uh, uh, skill sets. So, so these are uh, must be uh, selected for uh, your core courses um, for all concentrations. Uh, aside from that, um, these core courses uh, to complete the remaining semest semester hours, you should select at least two um, courses from the restricted technical electives and uh, three from the unrestricted technical electives. So basically this completes the 32 semester hours if someone with a bachelor degree. If someone comes with a master uh, degree or advanced entry, uh, the students need to take two, two of these courses as requirements, and then the, the other two the remaining courses are uh, going to uh, be advisor approved. So if you, your advisor uh, believes certain courses are relevant to your research, and, and basically you just need to take two additional courses, uh, you know, advisor approved courses to complete your, your course requirements. So uh, outside of the course requirements, uh, all students are required to enroll to uh, participate our seminar, uh, department seminar. Department seminar are uh, delivered by uh, invited um, high profile speakers, such as uh, some of the, um, um, uh, some other um, active um, pro professors in other departments or, or other universities. We invite them to give a talk about their cutting edge research. Uh, a student must enroll to enroll this seminar course, which means you have to go to the uh, seminar uh, for at least two semesters, but we encourage all students to uh, go to uh, all of these seminars. These are wonderful uh, events where you can learn about the where the research, the, the, the latest research uh, is. Then the students are required to give student seminars. This is a separate course and student on their second and fourth year are, uh, are uh, required to give a something called work in progress seminar to basically present to the department, to faculty members and other peer students, uh, your current research. So student gonna present twice through their program. So once they finish all of that, uh, the degree um, will be, um, uh, the only other requirement is to complete the dissertation and defend the PhD dissertation. So um, the department has, as, uh, as Harsh mentioned, there are four uh, research areas or concentrations. Uh, there is an imaging instrument and signal processing, and there is a biomechanics, biotransport, and biomechanical bio, uh, biology concentration. There is a uh, molecular cellular tissue engineering and system synthetic and computational and bioengineering. So um, this basically that um, summarizes the uh, diverse nature of bioengineering research and also interdisciplinary research of bioengineering. Um, the uh, molecular cell and tissue engineering is one of the largest concentration of our department. And uh, system synthetic and computational bioengineering is our youngest, but also very actively being developed. Um, uh, and I'll have another slide talk about this uh, later. So for each concentration, uh, for the restricted, uh, for this restricted technical electives, there is a list of courses for each concentration. So you need to select the corresponding courses from uh, the list of uh, the corresponding concentration that you're your your uh, studying. The as I mentioned, the system synthetic and computational bioengineering was established just a few years ago, and yet we have recruited a very strong uh, body of uh, faculty members to run this concentration. They are the uh, the uh, researchers, uh, very well known researchers in this field, and are uh, in a recruiting uh, PhD uh, 
students to participate some of the cutting edge research in this area. Uh, this concentration is also a uh, reflection of the um, multidisciplinary um, research um, in our field, where you have to combine the knowledge of biology, um, bioinformatics, um, computation, and also uh, uh, the data science, and all together, machine learning, uh, all together to solve complex um, uh, problems because our biological system is in nature a extremely complex uh, system and that takes all these combination of these knowledge to um, to tackle these challenges. Um, there is uh, um, basically on our website you can find this research map that we put together. You can see basically the uh, uh, faculty members listed under each concentration or the research area and you some of the uh, professors are cross listed because their research um, uh, spans through uh, across multiple domains and if you're interested in pursuing our PhD uh, P P pursuing a, a PhD degree in our department the first step I encourage you to go to our website and go to the uh, professor's website and look at their research and their publications and connect to them and, and uh, see if there's any uh, financial support and interest of recruiting or opening in the lab. And that will give you a head start um, for your application. Next, I'll pass on to Professor Xiaoming Shi to, um, oh, uh, Caroline, do you want to add anything? Yeah, um, I'll take over the screen sharing from you at this point. Now mine's back up and running. Um, so Absolutely. Okay, so let me quit my screen. Oh, sorry, stop sharing. And uh, I'll let Caroline to share the screen. Thank you. Um, and yeah, over to you, Professor Shi. Yeah, thanks, Caroline. Thanks, Professor Fan. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. Okay, for MS students, so the overall requirement is 32 credits of graduate level courses, equivalent to eight courses. Minimum grade, minimum GPA 3.00 or uh, B, B for boy. And all students are going to require to take these two core courses, principal bioengineering and medical physiology. And you're also going to choose one of these four concentrations. Okay, it's similar to PhD program, slight different name. Each concentration, there are two or three required courses. And you can choose either just course only, no research, or you do a one semester long MS project or a two semester long MS thesis. Okay, I'm going to talk about this project thesis shortly. Next slide. Okay, it's in your first semester, okay, you're going to take this one credit course, principal engineering. Okay, we meet once a week, okay, one hour session. You're going to get an overview of the bioengineering research at our department or university. Okay, we invite the PI, principal investigator, who has research project for you. So you need an opportunity for you to get to know your potential MS project or MS thesis advisor. In the meantime, you can learn how to do literature research, literature reading, as well as write a research summary. By the end of the semester, you're going to do an in-class oral presentation right? so to refine your communication and public speaking skills. Okay, next slide. Okay, through this course, as well as your personal interaction communication, you find your project advisor. Okay, as you complete in one semester through this course, the BIOE 7890. It will count for four credits of your academic requirements. Okay, you write a project report, submit to your advisor, get his or her approval. And the department, as well as the advisor, can archive your project report. If you are interested in your bigger scale research, you do an MS thesis. Next slide, please. Okay, same process, finding a CIS advisor. Okay, you can complete in two semesters. Okay, it's eight credits. Okay, it's a different course number. 
Okay, you can write a thesis. Okay, you can have a three member committee. Okay, the committee can approve your thesis. You also can give a seminar to defend your thesis, you know, the public seminar. Why do you want to pursue a master's degree in our department? Well, you all have a career plan. You want to advance your career. You want to establish a broader network in the industry and academia or to learn cutting edge research, make yourself more competitive in the job market. Maybe some of you might like to eventually get into a PhD program get a PhD degree and you want to make yourself a more competitive in the PhD application. Okay, so quite a significant number of our MS students so eventually choose to do continue to PhD either with our own department or to other institutes. Okay, after you get your MS degree, if you start to go directly in industry, so what are some of the career paths and positions okay, from our past graduates? So this is some of the positions they work on. Associate scientist, product development engineer, process development scientist, R&D engineer, or research assistant, research associate in industry or academia. Okay, some of the company our alumni work for Okay, you, you already saw a similar slide and Eli Lilly is in the first column there. Actually, I just heard from one of the MS student graduate two years ago. She got a promotion. I'm happy to email me about the great news. And Madonna and one of my cellular engineering course students just told me last week, we got a call position. The first year, uh, just finished his first year MS study. You're going to do a co-op, six months paid position starting in July. You're going to end in December, so you can come back in January 2024 to continue his MS study. Yes, you see some of the university medical schools, graduate school list here, that's where they go to do their PC study. Okay, so some of the unique aspect of our program as the feedback from our alumni, the flexibility, the program provided, you can choose register for the course of your interest across the college. Yeah, not limited just to our own departments. Okay, the accessibility of the program, the to the PI to research opportunities. We are programmed with about sixty enrollment in the fall, from ten to twenty enroll in the spring. And so it's it's large enough for you to get a nice network, but it's not too huge. We're not uh, such, like some other program with several hundred students. So you have really accessible to the department and to the professors. And many of our class actually, the class size is pretty small. Okay, so next our graduate ambassador. Yeah, I'll take over um, from here. Thank you, Professor Shi. Okay, yeah, um, so great to um, have you all with us this morning. As Professor Met Fang mentioned earlier, my name is Caroline Pridmore. I'm the Academic Operations Manager for the Bioengineering Department. Um, and as our graduate ambassador wasn't able to make it this morning, um, I'll be letting you know how to connect with uh, our graduate ambassadors um, to, to kind of help, help you give a, get a bit more information on our program. So graduate ambassadors are here to assist you with your program questions, what to expect in the new city when you move uh, to Boston, housing, um, those practical elements, um, which is great to connect with a graduate student who has been through it, they know what to expect and so they can guide you on what to expect as well. Um, this website here, our COE graduate student ambassadors website is a great uh, place to go um, for more information. 
graduate ambassadors can help you with department and program specifics as they've been through the program again have spent time in the department they're a great resource um, they can provide uh, the student experience and perspective talk to you about uh, student groups talk to you about coursework um, and they can also guide you on relocating to boston seattle silicon valley portland um, any of our, our global network um, campuses uh, that harsh mentioned at the beginning of the presentation and they can also guide you on the best things to take advantage of during your time at Northeastern. Um, there are many things to take advantage of, so it can be uh, hard to choose. So they can guide you and um, to help you find your best interests. Um, what they can't help with is application eligibility and profiles. Um, this is for the admissions team. Um, same with admissions decisions or status. Um, the COE grad admissions email is the best, best place to go for all of these queries. Um, course registration and trouble, troubleshooting is our graduate advising team, or you're more than welcome to reach out to the department as well for help, um, but the graduate advisors are the best people to guide you on that. Um, international student processing, the Office of Glo Global Services um, are your um, contact points um, for that. They have drop-in hours posted on their website. They have a really um, informative website, so anything to do with the visa process, I-20s, etc., is for the Office of Global Services. Um, and similarly, website payment, my Northeastern or IT issues, um, don't direct towards your uh, graduate investor um, as they're at the offices who can help you with that. So as I mentioned, the ambassador website is a great place to go for information. Um, there's a lot of social media engagement, WhatsApp, uh, Weibo, Facebook, Instagram, um, there's a big network of social media for uh, bioengineering, um, for college, college of Engineering and Northeastern um, as a whole. And the graduate ambassadors participate in many events, including webinars, um, which you can find um, recordings on the YouTube channel and virtual open houses um, in webinars such as this one. Um, they respond to student inquiry forms found on the COE, COE admissions page, um, and you can email them at this email address here, coeambassadors at listserve.nu.edu. So please reach out with additional questions, particularly about the student experience, and they'll be happy to help. In the Department of Bioengineering, we have an amazing graduate student council. We are very, very proud of our student community. Um, in my role, I, um, I spend a lot of time um, supporting our PhD students and working with master's students as well. Um, and so I have seen firsthand how amazing the student group is um, in building the community in bioengineering. Um, they do events such as apple picking, departmental picnics, which we have one coming up in May. Um, they do monthly coffee hours, uh, town halls um, to gather student feedback and, and address student issues. Um, and they also put a lot of work into our annual research symposium in the summer, which is a wonderful event. Um, they strongly advocate for students um, and build, building a community within the environment. Um, and are just it's a, it's a really wonderful aspect of our department. So to get involved with student clubs, um, as I mentioned, there are a, a huge amount of things that you can get involved in um, at Northeastern. This is just a few, um, but definitely search on um, the website um, to explore what you might be interested in. Additional student support. Um, we discussed our co-op coordinators. Um, they are excellent at providing one-on-one -on -one career advising, um, helping you connect with a suitable co-op, and they offer workshops as well. Um, and are just a wonderful resource. I mentioned the Office of Global Services for any um, international student um, advising um, visas, I-20s, CPT, et cetera. Um, graduate Student Services is your contact for academic advising, registration, um, and all of that. Um, and in addition, we have the Global Student Success Office with uh, tutoring workshops and webinars and career design and employer engagement as well. So at this point, I think I'll pass over um, to Harsh to talk about next steps and to wrap up today's presentation. Sure, thank you. So for all the students that have been texting in the Q&A, thank you so much. There were some great questions and it was a great subway. Caroline talked about student ambassadors, so definitely connect with them regarding your housing questions, campus life, and also just to reiterate that this is not where we're going to answer your questions about your application. It's just the reason why each student has different, their different stages of their application, so we highly encourage you to email our 
um, graduate admissions inbox, and we'll definitely have someone respond to you within the next 24 to 48 hours. So just when we talk about next steps, so this is, so if you have been accepted to Northeastern, first we'd like to all congratulate you on your acceptance. So when you get accepted, you should have received an email regarding your acceptance package. Your first things, of course, is pay your enrollment fee. Once you pay that enrollment fee, it will lead you to other funnels. So, which is of course, claiming your Northeastern account. Once that is done, that is when your other next steps will happen. If you're an international student, of course, you start applying for the I-20 process. If you're not an international student, then you're gonna have a little different area of like looking for housing and planning orientation. But this is just a little thing, glimpse that's there. This is also available on our website. And like um, Caroline said, this is all shared at our um, Student Ambassador YouTube page. So you could definitely reference back to this um, webinar that we're currently on. And then you could definitely just pause on the screen and just overview it. But definitely the first focus is pay your enrollment deposit, claim your Northeastern account, and then follow the next steps from there. If you're a student that has not yet applied to Northeastern, it's still not too late. June 1st is our application deadline. After June 1st, students are no longer able to submit an application. If you're outside of um, like outside of the United States, of course, but if you are a student that's still in the United States and that don't need um, an I-20 or um, OPT or anything, then you have until August 1st. So when we talk about admissions requirements, there is an application fee of $75, but since you've joined this webinar, that will be waived and you'll get a separate email from us for joining us with the YouTube link to this session, as well as with the fee waiver code. You need two letters of recommendation, unofficial transcript, statement of purpose, your resume, the juries have been waived. It's up to your discretion if you want to submit them. And then, of course, if you if you are from a country that we do require IELTS, TOEFL, or Duolingo, you must submit them. We will need the official scores from that website, not um, a PDF. So if you send a PDF, your application will stay incomplete. Something to also um, take note is that when you submit your application to Northeastern, you have up to three programs you could choose from. So one is your primary one, and then you could choose two additional supplementary programs or concentrations within Northeastern as well. So those, that's a really cool thing that we have available for students. And then of course, keeping in touch with us, right? We're available around the clock from our team to our student ambassadors to other members at Northeastern. So these are just some of our Instagram handles, Twitter, all these pages, and then of course, links as well. Um, College, just like how undergrad is, grad is very much how you make it. So it's really advisable for you to connect with us, ask any questions you have, reach out to us. And of course, we have a FAQ on our website, which would probably have all the answers if you're looking for based on your questions. And then of course, the bioengineering social media site is also a great resource for you to connect with from YouTube to LinkedIn to Facebook. Where we are, where we're doing, is a lot of our um, faculty members and staff do promote it on their personal LinkedIn page as well as the institutions one. And then of course, now we're gonna end it with um, the Q&A session. We have five more minutes left of the session. So we definitely advise students to use this opportunity to ask any questions you have. If we don't get to your question, we apologize for that. It's just due to time. But um, if it's an application question, please email us. We will answer only not application questions. So. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then we could definitely, as a team, go through this questions together. Yeah, I think I'll start with there's um, a few common questions about um, teaching and research assistantship um, opportunities. So in the Department of Bioengineering, um, our R A and T A positions are for PhD students. Um, for master's students, we do have grading positions available regularly across the year. Um, but in terms of, um, of MS, um, financing, I would visit our financial services website. We have um, scholarships um, and other opportunities that you may be interested in looking at. Um, and in addition, um, there is a website called Workday, which you can look at um, student employment on campus for. Um, and I think a good question for either Professor Fang or Professor Shi is, does computational bioengineering have any relationship with neuroengineering? Um, so com uh, computational system biology uh, is a very broad area and it has some application in that area, but it's a much broader, much uh, like um, it's an umbrella term basically for 
bioinformatics uh, and, 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 and also for many other complex biological systems, including neural um, systems. So, and unfortunately, you know, it's both names are very, <laughs> um be used for covering a wide range of research so they might have intersections but um you know we have to um specifically know what type of research or type of um the uh the topic that you're interested in great um there's another question um uh, how can I connect with other students on my program if I am joining in the fall? Um, so the Graduate Ambassadors is a great place to start with that. Um, I would say that's your starting point is email your Graduate Ambassador um, and they can uh, connect you further. Um, and definitely when you join the program as well, when you do arrive um, during orientation, there are many opportunities to um, start to build those networks and many events as well. One question about applicants with background in chemical engineering. It's definitely proper. We actually have quite some students with background in chemical engineering join our program. I've got a good question about um, anyone who um, joins the MS program and options to um, apply to a PhD program. Um, so I'll pass over to Professor Feng to answer that one. So we have been, uh, have uh, quite a few students um, pursue that pathway and many of the labs uh, start work with the student when the student was a master's student. And then um, the was a desire of continuing research from the student and also supporting the student from the advisor and many of them have uh, uh, advanced to the PhD program. It is possible that uh, we, um, the student can um, directly um, without, without finishing the master degree, they can convert to a PhD program. We have been uh, processing several of these cases. Uh, the courses that you took during the P uh, master program can be, um, uh, uh, converted to uh, your PhD um, credit. And, but that, um, for those cases, uh, the, basically the, uh, the student um, and, and the advisor uh, wanted to basically um, make an agreement, basically the, the, the advisor is willing to continue supporting the student as a PhD, um, in the, as a, like in the PhD program. Perfect, thank you. So we are on the top of the hour, so the session would organically end on its own. So we appreciate everyone that have joined us. And of course, please feel free to reach out to us for specific program questions regarding like with the program layout is or anything. I highly encourage you to reach out to our student ambassadors. They are the key students that take the programs. Our faculty members just teach it. So they definitely could give you a different perspective on what their experience is. But once again, thank you everyone for joining us and we hope the session was great. This recording will be shared with all of you as well as you should receive a follow-up email as well. Thank you everyone, take care.